I'm Dr. Jack Gilbert, and this is traditional. Today, the probiotic market is a $28 billion a year industry, but our obsession with probiotics is nothing new. More than 100 years ago, Nobel laureate Eli Metchinkoff suggested that drinking fermented milk could suppress harmful bacteria in the gut and elevate overall health. But the claims continue today, with some brands suggesting that their probiotics can reduce the incidence of colds and flu, suppress allergies, and even regulate the digestive cycle. So do these superbugs actually take root in our digestive system and improve our microbial health? Or are they kicked out by the bacteria that are already present there? Is there any credible evidence to support the claim that regularly consuming probiotics actually has a substantial health benefit for humans? Well, the answer is no. Wait, what? Surprisingly, there hasn't been a study like a double-blind clinical trial to get to the bottom of this. Many of the trials have lacked the methodological quality that will lend credence to their conclusions. You can't blame a yogurt company for wanting to do a study that proves the benefit of their product. But should you believe them? Interestingly, scientists have shown that many of the probiotics can be useful in treating diseases in cows and pigs, even diseases and allergies in humans. But are we there yet? Can we identify a probiotic with real clinical significance? Julie Bubeck Wardenberg at the University of Chicago and Susan Erdman at MIT have been working at the forefront of understanding how microbes interact with our immune system to develop combinations of clinical probiotics and drugs that can treat disease. So what do they think about the health benefits of yogurts and probiotics? Many of these organisms, these microorganisms, have evolved with people in ways that the balance and harmony uh, enhances the survival of both. So it's likely that there are many microorganisms that can eventually be harnessed for good health. But there are some microorganisms, particularly bacteria, that have already been tested in human subjects and found to have benefits. Um, there's a lot of, that remains to be tested. There's a lot that's still not known. I think what's missing overall in making that connection between a defined probiotic and clinical implementation is real, detailed clinical analysis of the benefits, or the relative risks even, of the application of specific probiotics in specific disease states. And to achieve that, that will really require the type of clinical studies that we do to examine other drugs or to examine other modes of therapy. And being involved in that kind of research is very exciting with so much potential for um, good human health and public health goals. The new clinical probiotics coming online are truly exciting and offer a real opportunity to treat diseases and disorders with microbes. However, while commercially available probiotics may look promising from the outset, we need more robust research before we're ready to buy into the claims made by the advertisers, well-meaning as they may be. We know that consuming probiotics isn't harmful, but when it comes to our health, we need that heavy dose of skepticism that only good science can provide. Meanwhile, the only reason I need to eat Greek yogurt is arguably the most important reason for all food, because it tastes good. <laughs>